The following software tutorial covers the basic to intermediate workflow for SRP Player CAM software. We start by launching SRP Player software. And you can open your part by clicking the open button. These are the different file formats that you can import. Or you can drag your part into the open window. You can now see and verify your part. We now need to verify that our software is set up properly, so we will now go to File Preferences. We can check the units, language, and we also want to make sure that our machine is properly selected as well as any options and we also have to make sure that the printer name matches the model name. You can change the color scheme if desired and there is also an advanced tab for disabling some of the safety features. This is only recommended for advanced users. You can view the part from different angles, and we'll see the benefit of this at a later time. Under the Options tab, there are different parameters. Under Add Remove Material, you can add additional material, although the list is pretty extensive, so we don't need to add any material. You can also add a new tool if desired. The list is pretty extensive, but if you wanted to add a new tool, you can click on New, give the tool an easy to recognize name, change the tool type, select the material, enter the flute diameter of your tool, as well as the flute length. Click the register button to register the tool and OK to close the window. We also have the My Tools features. If you're not quite sure which tool to use, you can simply check off all the tools that you have and the software will help you select the proper tool. If you have an automatic tool changer, you can edit what tool goes into what stock location. Another useful feature is the wireframe view. This will allow you to see a mesh version of your part instead of the shaded version. This will allow you to see any hidden features that can be seen with the rendered view. SRP Player gives you the ability to change the size of your part simply by entering a new size or via scale. And you can also change individual dimensions or axes by unchecking the keep XYZ ratio. You can stretch your part to a completely different size and bring it back to the original size if needed. For this example, we're going to increase the size of the part by 225%. You can change the orientation of the part as well as the rotation if desired. Next, we'll answer a series of questions to help SRP player select the best tooling such as, do you want a better surface finish or a faster cutting time? Does your model have many flat planes or does it have many curved surfaces? You can also select what type of material you have as well as whether you'll be cutting this part from one side or two sides. 
You also have the option of adding supports to the part. And you can also modify the supports You can move the supports to the location desired and verify the location by changing the view as well as the size of the parts. Click apply and close when finished. As this model already has supports, we actually won't be using them for this example. Once finished, we click on step three to select our material and size of material. From the pull-down list, we select the material that we'll be using, as well as the size of the material. We need to ensure that we add a value that is larger than the value in the parentheses. The value in the parentheses is the absolute minimum size that can be added for this part. We'll now click on create toolpath to generate the toolpaths. This may take a few minutes depending on the size and quality of your part. Once this is finished, we'll click on preview results to get a preview of what the cut part will look like. Once completed, we'll be able to see if our part was programmed properly or if anything was missing. Here we can see that the part was not cut out properly and some modifications will have to be made to the program created. This can easily be done by clicking on step three and the edit button. Here we will be able to see the different processes required to mill this part and within each one we can see the different parameters such as which surface to cut, the cutting area, the cutting depth, the tool used, the toolpath type, and cutting parameter. For this example we need to change the margin of the part and to better view this we'll change it first to the top view uh, we'll click on the Add a Margin button, click the Automatically button to automatically generate the proper size of the margin, and the Apply button. We don't need to apply a margin to the left or the right as the tabs are already creating the proper spacing, but we do need to add a margin to the top and bottom of the part. And we also need to do this for all the remaining processes. Once completed, we'll close this window and create the toolpaths once again. Once completed, we'll click on Preview Results to view the changes made and view if the part is cut out from the material properly. We can see that although the part is cut out, the holes in the part are not cut out and we will need to make some advanced modifications to the part to ensure that the holes are cut out properly. We now return to step three and click on the edit button to add a new process to the processes we currently have. To add a new process, we click on the new process button, select whether it's roughing or finishing, and give it a name. We will be changing the angle to match the angle of the hole and click apply. We also want to change the cutting area so that we cut only the holes. 
to do this, we click on the partial button and drag the box around the holes that we want to cut. Click apply when finished. And we also want to change the depth of the tool so that it doesn't cut too deep or too narrow. We then change to the wireframe view and drag the bottom line to the bottom. We also want to change the tool to a more appropriate smaller tool. And you can also change the cutting parameters. Next we'll add a finishing process. We need to make sure that it's the same angle as the roughing process before it. Change the cutting area again to ensure that we're cutting only the holes. We'll need to change the cutting depth. And choose the same tool as the roughing process. We can create an all-new process for the other side, or we can copy the first angled roughing process and simply change a couple of parameters. For example, the angle. And the cutting area. All the other parameters are the same as the previous roughing. And we'll do the same for the second finishing. We'll change the name. The angle. And the cutting area. The depth and the tool and cutting parameters will be the same for the previous one. Next, we want to create a new process to cut just the text in the part. And we're going to copy one of the finishing programs, give it a new name. Change the tool to a much smaller tool for cutting the text and change the cutting area so we don't waste too much time cutting the entire part with the small tool. Again, you can see the advantage of using the wireframe view versus the shaded view. We'll also make a slight modification to the cutting depth to ensure that only the text is cut out and not the surrounding area. To do this, we'll change the start height so that it's sitting just below the surface of the part. This will ensure that only the text is cut out. You can also move a process up or down in the order simply by selecting the process and clicking the up or down arrows. And you can also turn off a process so that that process is not cut. So when the machine starts to cut, it will simply skip that process. Once we are satisfied with our modifications, we'll click the close button and create toolpath button to generate the toolpaths.
Once completed, we'll take a look at our part one process at a time. Here we can see the text and only the text, the different angled views for the holes, and we'll click close. Next we'll take a look at the results and see what they look like. We'll now be able to see the part. the side holes, as well as the text on the bottom of the part. We can also click on show model to show the original model and preview results to see what it'll look like after it's cut on the machine. Click step five to start the cutting process. If you have an automatic tool changer, you need to assign a tool to a stock number. To do so, click the Edit Magazine button and assign a tool to a stock number. You can now start cutting the part.